Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Roshi Zare, episode number um, 7, Reaction. So, the previous episode, um, we got to see Alia and uh, Yuki. Uh, they talked to each other about the whole situation with the student council and Alia was like, you know, like, uh, like Masachika is helping me and she proclaims that and Yuki is like, yeah, it's fine, no problem. And uh, Yuki <laughs> kind of made her almost admit like what Masachika means to him, uh, her. Uh, and uh, then you know you know usually the way Yuki trolls she was basically doing that um, so that's what happened with that section and then later on we got to see Masachika uh, talking about the student council election what happens this and that stuff you know his previous knowledge that he has he was sharing it with uh, Ali and then the whole indirect kiss that whole situation happens and uh, by the end we also get to see Yuki's um, the person who will be helping Yuki it's that girl who we see in the opening and also in the flashbacks I'm assuming she is like some kind of a like a personal caretaker of Yuki or something um, and she calls Masachika as Sama I'm, I'm assuming she also calls Yuki as Sama probably because of that uh, but I do wonder how the other people will take it because you know obviously like nobody knows the connection between Masachika and Yuki so why is that calling Masachika as Sama you know I'm sure that that question will pop up so let's see what happens today in this episode um yeah let us begin I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go Oh, here we go. Oh, hello? What are you, a ninja? <laughs> I know. Okay, that's her name. Hmm. <laughs> she just said, it's just said the same thing as me. Yo. I'm guessing Masachika will probably tell her that, oh, don't call me Sama in school, otherwise it'll bring up a lot of questions. Because, you know, like, you can explain why she calls Yuki as Sama if, you know, like, they say that, oh, she's like her personal caretaker. But then they'll also ask, why is she calling Masachika as Sama? Oh, maybe they will play it off as like, oh, because they're childhood friends, like, you know, that's why... She also calls him. Okay, I think that might happen. They'll probably play it off like that. We'll see. Um, yeah, the storm approaches, okay. Yeah. Ooh, wait, so his dad. Incredulous. What? That is ridiculous. Oh no, grandfather, I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah, okay. What's with the subtitles? Oh. Hmm. Threats. <laughs> yeah. I guess, in that sense. Mm.
yeah he just wanted to help that is true you know Yeah, I don't think Yuki's taking like he obviously she is sad, but I don't think <clears throat> Oh. Hmm. Talk to me. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Like, if you wanna, you know, say stuff like this, tell it to my face. Well, obviously, she's her sister. Like, come on. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, what? <laughs> I just <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Wait, what? Kujo Senpai, so, um, Masha. <laughs> well, he, he's part of the Stone Council, so. Oh no, Alia's gonna come. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> She's like, yeah? This is what's happening? <laughs> you animal. Wow. Oh my god, they actually... Yo. Hello? Wait, did she hear the whole Masha comment? I think she did. Okay, stop, stop that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god, yep. Stop it. Yep. And they're like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, what's up with the sub? I, I cannot get. Like, oh my god, this show. Yeah. No, no. Well. <laughs> well, you said it. Great job. No. Hmm. What? Man, I idolized. Okay. Yeah.
Hello? What? Um, right. So she just. So she is just like an idol or something, like how people look at idols. Like, you know. Yeah, so it's like, like idol, like how people like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, the subtitles are completely butchering it. Right. You honor me? Okay. Right. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so because her facade almost dropped. Unichan <laughs> sama. Hmm. Which makes sense because she did a really good job back. She's being dumb question. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Prodigy. Yeah, he, he mentioned this before, I remember. Yeah, that's what you were doing? Okay. I was wondering why she's like, <laughs> like over exaggerating her whole thing. So yeah, that's why she was doing it. <laughs> They're using... Okay, you know what? That makes sense. Obviously, they cannot gamble properly. This is cool. <laughs> well. Damn. You know, she's- what the hell? <laughs> Iano's probably really good at it because of her poker face. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah, that is that is true because she's actually hiding the whole fact that you know she knows that Masatika's paragon of virtue. <laughs> mm. Whoa! Yeah. Wait, what is it, Kanta? <laughs> Hmm. Grandparents. Ah. Oh. Okay. Well. But. The I see. Ah. Okay. Is 
second grade <laughs> uh stop <laughs> massage <laughs> she she almost slipped <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Damn, that's why she's like a ninja. <laughs> wow. A proper ninja. <laughs> she did all this training. Yo! Damn! <laughs> Yo! Oh god. Ma Wait, what? Oh, I guess that's his actual name. Okay, her. Hmm. <laughs> well she likes a challenge so she's okay she, she's gonna go oh i was go yeah <laughs> that's funny oh okay i thought they were breaking the fourth wall or something okay never mind <laughs> hmm. Damn, variety. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well. Yep, she re he remembered everything. That's why they call him a prodigy, I'm guessing. He probably has like really good memory, like photographic memory or something. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why she's like hiding her as as Masanjika said, responsible side. Otherwise, it'll like clash. You know, if they're in the same, people will compare her, and that will like, is going to happen. She doesn't want that. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Extra lax. Damn. Yeah. Wow. I guess he was also thinking of, yeah, his. His own situation with Yuki. Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> I don't think so, yeah. She, he, she's just an just a weeb. <laughs> wow. Mm. Oh, her, his diet, like his way of speaking. <laughs> well, because she knew you from your childhood. Oh, is this that girl? Uh, what's her name? I uh, forgot her name. The one, yep, this girl. Tayaka Tanyama. Okay. Yeah. Is she gonna say like team up with me or something? Yeah. Or no, wait. Um. What? Well, but that. What? Hmm. Wait, why is she? Wait, why is she getting heated up? Like uh, this girl, Tanyana? Yeah. Um, no, that's what happened. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's going to be the third candidate or something. Oh, so, wait. Hmm. Wait, okay, wait a minute. So... Yeah, she's... Oh my god. She needs another... Damn. Okay. All right, let's hear the ending this this episode what it is.
cannot recognize this. Oh, that's it. Okay. I, I was expecting like a chorus to drop or something. Never mind. Um, okay. That is it. And um, that was today's episode. Right. So today's episode had f a few things. Number one, the whole um, Ayano situation where Ayano talks to um, uh, Masajika and uh, that whole conversation happens. And uh, then the second part is basically um, Ayano talking to Yuki and, you know, like Yuki being like, okay, so let's do this. Like, you know, let's have a f proper fight. And then we also have, um, wait a minute. Oh, the whole Ma Masha scene where Masha goes and uh, with Masachika and she like pats his, her, his head. Also, we get to see why Masha tries to, or doesn't actively try to stand out because of Alia. And in a way, she, like, you know, Masajika kind of relates that with Yuki about how Yuki maybe does his, her whole otaku persona because of that. But then he's like, nah, that's probably not the case. She, she's just a, she's just a, she's just a weeb. That's, that's it. That, that's, she's just an otaku. You know, it's, it's not that. <laughs> but anyways, um, that was that. Uh, and I feel like it, it, it's kind of pointless to, like, you know, um, act like that at least in Masachika's situation because nobody knows that they're siblings you know if or at least like m most people do not know their siblings that is why no i think nobody knows because from this episode we got to see that you know this is one thing i've always thought like how does nobody in the school know their siblings because obviously at least the teachers and they should you know they should know and like you know like something like that like how are they hiding it from today's episode, I realized it's because of the grandfather. The grandfather probably said something, as, as we saw here, that do not, like, relate yourself with the family. You know, something like that he said, like, don't call yourself the brother. And I'm guessing the grandfather probably put some strings to make sure nobody in the school knows that they're related. That is why, you know, it's, like, it's, nobody knows about it. Otherwise, it's, it's very, so, like, you know, I, I was always thinking, like, you know, like, yeah, like, I can understand nobody understands that they're siblings, but, you know, what about the, the staff, the teachers, and, like, you know, maybe some kind of, like, you know, like, that kind of thing, but I guess, and I guess it was easy to probably cover up because, um, I don't know, like, yeah, like, and, and, and like, Yuki's family, or, you know, Masajika and Yuki's family, they seem to be very, I guess, influential or something from the looks of it. So they, that's why it was probably easy for them to hide this whole thing. This, you know. Anyways, um, so yeah, that that was that section, and then the final section where Taniyama, I think that is his, her name. Or, wait a minute, what's her name? Taniyama, isn't it? Um, just a minute. Yeah, Taniyama, that's her name. So Taniyama comes in and like challenges them. Now at first I was so confused because at first she was like, oh, so you took, um, you know, you used the underhanded means to take Kusekun from um, uh, Yuki and uh, something like that, she says. And uh, then like at first I was like, wait, so why is she getting heated up about this? Like, you know, like what's, you know, like, I, yeah, I can understand they did like, you know, like a, presidential they had like a battle before and then she suddenly like when um Masuchika comes in and she's he's like oh no it's my decision that's all that stuff he says she then turns she completely turns and she's like oh so it's your fault and then she's like okay then i'm going to um i challenge you and then he, like ale was like wait i am the president supposed to be the president here so you know and she's like okay so i was i was 
burying you i was sparing you the embarrassment but if you want to like you know go against me you can go against me come on i'll, I'll take you both of you out at the same time now from this whole conversation this one thing i think i can make a guess is that she probably i wouldn't call it idolizes but she probably looks at yuki in a very high regard because you know yuki is like really talented and uh, since she went against yuki that pro she probably got to realize that how how good yuki is and she probably respected her as an opponent but she probably doesn't like masachika because she like you know he's like he, i think at least i think that he thinks that masachika wasn't worthy enough for being the vice president back then comparing him to yuki and that is why she's like acting like this or something like that i think like it's i think it's a weird situation because i think he she idolizes or like you know she probably respects yuki so much that is why the first thing she did was like probably got mad at the fact that alia like she at least thought that alia was the one who like convinced masachika to go along with her that is why you know i'm guessing probably because of her high level of respect or whatever for yuki she said that to her first that oh why did you you know like you why are you why did you take away yuki from uh sorry um uh, masachika from yuki and then when she realizes that the problem isn't ale it's actually masachika who you know decided to uh go along with her her whole thing kind of switched because you know up until now like her probably her respect for yuki was made her say something like this to alia but when he she realized that it was it was masachika himself she probably got mad at masachika and she was like oh like yeah you're not even worthy enough to be standing to uh, to have stood beside yuki and now this is what you're trying to pull so i'll take you down maybe it's something along those lines i'm not 100% sure but i'm I, i'm i'm pretty much sure about one point that she probably looks at yuki in high regard you know but she thinks or underestimates masachika or something like that and uh, she thinks that he he wasn't good enough for his position which is something that masachika also thought of i remember one of the previous episode she he himself said something like and 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 the whole reason why he didn't want to be in the student council was this that she he thinks that someone else is better suited for his position and this some other person who is better suited for his position is probably this girl taniyama at least that's what masachika thinks you know and masachika thinks that because i was with yuki i was able to breeze through that whole thing and taniyama who probably would have been a worthy person to be like vice president with yuki or something never got her chance to shine because of him and she he feels guilty about it maybe i i don't know but here's another thing this is one thing i don't don't understand or i'm i'm you know like i think i need to understand it a little bit better there was like a section in today's episode like two sections in today's episode where it was shown that yuki is very like you know i guess you could say talented or something like that like like some kind of a you know and it was shown that at least in today's episode that masachika feels that he is not good enough to be you know going against yuki or something like that like you know like she she doesn't he doesn't regard him as highly enough but then there was also another section where they proved that yeah, masachika himself is a prodigy even yuki said that so that's why i'm kind of confused because it seems like there's like a contradiction going on like he thinks that so i'm assuming he thinks that he's not worthy enough or good enough to be fighting this election along with yuki or something like that and he also like admits that yuki is way better than him in these type of things and he's not good enough but at the same time yuki says that he's a prodigy and uh, you know so i i okay you know what i think it's like something like that like it's not mutually exclusive like even though he's a prodigy it doesn't mean he's like you know he thinks he's 
good enough to be beside Yuki or fighting this along with Yuki. And he always had this whole thing. But, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to that section because I remember Yuki said this in the classroom. Where is that section? Um, let me check. Okay, so the part where he she goes to the um wait a minute okay that aside he's really set on taking me on huh nice things are getting interesting um honestly i didn't think alia would have put up much of a fight by herself most of first years seem to believe that you'll get elected okay that that whole thing as for Kujasama, I hate to be blunt, but it's being dumb because she, uh, okay. Right, okay, no, not that. Where's that section where she says, okay, now how does Onichan plan to turn this situation around? Um, you seem to be enjoying yourself. I am okay. I think he this part. I get to go up against that prodigy. Here we go. The greatest talent the Super family has produced. Only Chan who I could never best at anything. Oh no, okay, I misread this part. Okay, I thought she was saying that he couldn't beat me or something like that. Okay, that's why I was confused. I was like, there's like a contradiction going on. No, she, she said like who I could never best at anything um so she's talking about herself okay okay never mind right okay scratch that okay so now it's more clear to me so i'm assuming like i like i misread this part or i misunderstood that part i thought that she was saying that unichan who couldn't beat me up up until now at anything that's why i was so confused i was like she's calling him a prodigy and then she's also saying this like what but no she's okay so she's saying that she who couldn't be now it's more clear and now i understand it a little bit better so i'm assuming um masachika thinks that you know he is not you know good enough for that position or something like that but then why does masajika say that that whole section um you know where in front of the vending machine he said something like is that why yuki um mm. wait a minute okay here we go is she putting on a crazy attack of persona on purpose to act like a stupid little sis um okay this is also the reason why i thought maybe right anyways so okay so i i think i have a better understanding now like i i kind of completely misread that section um so yeah so what i'm assume understanding is obviously masajika is a prodigy something like that um you know and uh, he up until now always tries to so wait i'm like okay so masajika said like is is uh yuki trying to act as like the dumb sister in front of me because of that but i think it's the opposite isn't it like masajika is the one who, if from what i've heard from like you know these episodes what what yuki said and all of that stuff that he's a prodigy this and that if that is the case then wouldn't it be the opposite that he's the one who's suppressing himself so that Yuki can express herself? Yeah, it wouldn't be the other way around if that's the case. I think. Yeah. Anyways, but for, for Masachika, at least I think he's not suppressing it knowingly. He just like he just it's like a like some kind of a like as he said he just he just tries to take it like cool because he doesn't want to um where is that part just a minute um here we go Please, you act like you're not hiding a responsible side yourself. Ma Masha, Masha said this to Masachika. And yeah, so there you go. She, and he says, unlike you, I don't have a good reason for it. Um, I'm just looking out for myself. 
I just played a slacker so I can take it easy and not have people depending on me. Um, don't pay it any mind. Okay, so yeah, like, so he, that is his explanation of why he takes it easy or why he's hiding himself. So yeah, like I said, it isn't Yuki who's doing that. It, it's, it's him. He's the one who's like, I guess you could say suppressing himself. And as a result, Yuki can express herself. And uh, again, I'm pretty sure that he does that because of her, his guilt of leaving Yuki to alone when they were kids. Like, I feel like that is like the main reason, like anything related to Yuki or most of the stuff related to Yuki, stuff where you can see Masachika suppressing her himself or doing, you know, stuff like this. The main reason that stems, the, 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 the main reason why that happens is because he feels bad. He feels bad for leaving Yuki alone at the time when she was sick and when he, she needed him the most. And she, he feels guilty. And, and also the fact that his grandfather said like, oh, do not like, you know, like stand in her way. Like, you know, that, that whole thing. <laughs> that, that, that whole thing as well. But I don't think he cares about that. Not, that's not the reason. The main reason is his guilt. He feels guilty for leaving Yuki alone for in the time when she needed him the most and that's why he tries to do this and doesn't try to stand out and always like you know like lasers around and everything if he actually gave his all he probably would have been way more successful in any other thing than any other people in this school even compared to yuki you know and i think taniyama made a huge misunderstanding because of this and she thinks that Yuki is the one, the one worthy enough, the only one, <laughs> the prodigy or whatever. And uh, like, obviously, Yuki definitely herself is very intelligent, smart and all that. But she thinks that she's that smart, but um, Masachika is the one who like, who's not worthy enough to have stood beside her when he's such a slacker and he doesn't deserve it. I think that's that, that is why Tanyama in the end was like pissed off and everything and and yeah and something like that. I think it's that's what's going on. Um right. And there you go. That is what happened today. Good episode. We got to know a lot more about these characters and uh, what they think about who they are, like you know, how they are and we also got to know Masachika as well, a little bit more about him. Um right. Oh, and Ayano as well. You know, we got to know more about her. She's she's more of a, like, like her ad admiration for Masachika is more of how a, like a stan, like, stands for their idol, that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like pure admiration. She doesn't want to, like, you know, like, she doesn't like him in that sense, I guess, as she said. But, like, her love for him is in a, a different type of thing. It's like a, like an, like how a stand stands for their idol, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, that was today's episode. So next episode will, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll probably this whole uh, candidate and uh, this thing, like uh, this discussion and debate, wh wh whatever they called it. Like this, con this student, con no, wait, what was it? Um... Two presidential candidates are going to have a student congress. That's what they call it. Okay. Right. And here's the thing. They said two presidential candidates. That means she's also one, isn't she? Yeah, I think so. So I, so I, I was kind of correct. I, I knew she would be the third person. Like they mentioned that there'll be like, like it, obviously there'll be a lot of people trying to join in the, the whole thing, but they will like, water it down to three by the end of it and then three will be having this battle by the end and the process of you know taking out the extra candidates will be the student congress so that's how they'll whittle down the numbers and then when there'll be three they these three will be i'm guessing duking it out so obviously first one is yuki second one definitely is um alia and the third person will probably be taniyama with someone else who will probably meet in the future or something like that. Um, because, you know, there's two people, two, can, two, two of them together. So, yeah, so there you go.
that's we'll probably see that what happens in the next episode with the whole student congress thing okay now that was that now let me talk about this episode um scene by scene um in the very first scene we get to see um ayano <laughs> talk to masachika and she's as as masachika says she's like a ninja she just just appears behind you out of nowhere <laughs> oh my god and she's like oh like you know i want to talk to you so they go and like you know talk about this about the whole situation in a private section so she says the first thing she says is like grandfather or master she calls him is not happy about this has shown his displeasure with this turn of events so basically grandpa is like wait i just realized he looks like <laughs> looks like a, you know what's his name colin sanders isn't he wait a minute am i am i tripping isn't that who he lo exactly looks like that wait a minute oh my god yo i i don't know why i didn't realize that while i'm reacting I, it's, it's striking me now what the hell <laughs> he looks exactly like oh my god that is insane I didn't realize that. It, I don't know why I didn't realize that while reacting. It's, it's now that I'm realizing it. Bro. <laughs> okay, anyways, whatever. Um, so, right. So basically, he's like, oh, like, you know, don't stand in her way, this and that. And Masajika's like, like, what the hell? Like, you were the one who said that, you know, don't call yourself, a, a, like, you know, like a member of this family. Don't call yourself as the brother of Yuki. And now you're trying to act as family when you're the one who said that don't associate with us and now you're talking about family and you know he's kind of pissed he's like what the hell like if you want to talk about these whole situation come and talk to me directly don't like let other people talk in on behalf of you um yeah and then you know masajika's like wait so is that also the reason why i know you came to me to talk to me about this and she's like no i, I made that decision myself it's my job to assess any and all threats to her and she's like asking him she's like like, I truly believe that you will not do anything to cause sadness to Yuki, but, you know, like, now that you're doing this, um, and Mahasika says, like, you know, like, don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm trying to do this to oppose her, I'm just trying to help someone else. It's a situation that is making us put us against each other, so, you know, like, that, that's the whole thing. And he said, like, you know, he's like, I've made a promise to Ali, I'm not going to go against that. Um, so that is why it's an unfortunate set of situations, but yeah. And she says, like, is this because you harbor special feelings for her, like Alia? And he says, like, no, like, not that. But, okay, here we go. It was something I decided to, I wanted to do myself. Okay, so this conversation, this, this particular set of section of conversation, now, I also kind of believe that, as he says, obviously, at least for now, he doesn't harbor any type of, like, feelings for Alia. But, as he says, like, the reason why he's helping her out is probably because, I don't know, I feel like she, he probably, I'm trying to think, like, I, I think it's probably something like, he, as he says, like, he's doing this, made he's made this decision himself and he's trying to support someone you know and i also the fact i feel like he probably like through alia he's probably trying to i don't know like it's like a weird thing like he's probably trying to if you remember like obviously the whole thing with yuki is something that he has always um but no, I, I was going to say, like, the whole thing with Yuki is something that he's always regretted, like, leaving her alone um, when she, you know, in her childhood. So I was going to say, like, maybe this is, like, in a weird way, he's doing this, like, trying to help Alia, and it's, like, a weird way of him trying to, like, you know, like, uh, what's that word? Trying to... um. Like, he's helping Alia, and he's trying to do this because of his guilt for Yuki, and he's trying to, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, some kind of a, as a compensation, and trying to, like, forgive himself, 
from what it, you know, it's like a, like something like that. I, I don't know if I'm properly able to explain it, but I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about this. Like it's definitely something related to his state of mind, like the reason why he's trying to help Yuki. So I think it's like a mixture of everything. First thing is like, he probably thinks that Yuki, not Yuki, sorry, why I'm calling him Yuki, Alia. He probably thinks that Alia, um, like, you know, as you can see, like he, she definitely needs help in this whole like situation. And uh, he probably, as we saw, um, oh yeah, you know what? Okay. So yeah, this is the thing. I think this is what's going on. You, uh, uh, Masachika, the first meeting with Alia, as, we, as we've seen in the flashback, was Alia trying to do everything on his own, on her own, you, know, you see? And then, he, you know, Masachika comes in and helps her out and Yuki was like, oh, is it, is it wrong for me to try to do something like this and expecting a good result? Am I in the wrong here trying to work hard? And, you know, and then you see Masajika does that whole thing, like makes everything become okay. And, it, and the whole thing with plan was a success. That whole, like, you know, that thing in the first, in, in that flashback that we saw. And this is where Masajika saw how, I guess you could say, serious Yuki, uh, why am I calling her Yuki Alia is, um, about something that she wants to do. And she's going to do it even if nobody else helps her. Okay, you know what? I think I was correct. He probably sees Yuki in her. Um, you know how he left Yuki behind when she was a kid. Like she had to fend for herself. He probably f like sees that Yuki in Alia. And her, him trying to help Alia is a weird way of trying to like, you know, like, like trying to like... You know that do the things that he was never able to do with Yuki if you know what I mean like you know like the help that he was never able to give Yuki like him trying to help Alia is a weird way of trying to compensate for that and uh, it's also a way of trying to where he's trying to forgive himself because you can see he's, it's a very big guilt in his heart in this way, he's trying to forgive himself. Like, obviously, it's not the same thing. You know, Alia and Yuki are completely different. And you can also kind of say it's probably a little bit, um, like, like, it's a, like a weird type of situation, or like an ironical type of situation where even if trying to help Alia is like his way of trying to compensate for the time which he was not able to give Yuki when she needed it, it's kind of ironical because he's doing this, which is literally opposing Yuki currently. It's kind of, you know, like ironical in that sense. Um, but I think that's what's happening here. Because if you think about it, Yuki's situation back then, where she had to fend for herself all alone. And what Alia does all the time, where she tries to take everything on her own and do everything on her own, is very similar. So seeing that in front of him, you know... He knows that he wasn't able to help Yuki back then, but now that he's seeing someone else in a similar situation, he's trying not to make that same mistake again, and that's why she's, he's trying to help Alia. I think that is like the main motivation for him trying to help Alia. Obviously, as you know, like as he said, like I don't really like Alia, at least for now. Like that's not like the reason, but I think this is like a re this is like the reason. Like he's trying to not make the same mistake or do the same thing that he did back then which is a big source of guilt for him and by doing this and by helping Alia he's probably trying to forgive himself of what he was not able to do back then but like I said it's kind of ironical because by technically doing this he's again opposing Yuki you know so in that sense but I think he's just not trying to make the same mistake back then what he did because that is such a constant source of like anguish for him so seeing a similar situation in front of him he, he, he wants to help i don't know that at least that's what i uh, like understood or that's what i'm understanding from th this situation anyways i might be wrong um either way um that was that and you know then then you can see um uh i know it's like oh but you know like can you tell me this that like Yuki is definitely the person who you like 
like who you like the most or who you love the most and he's like yeah like obviously like you know like she's the most precious person to me that first part hasn't changed so please be there for her okay and yeah and then i know moves away again i guess that was also i way of confirming whether you know like yuki's uh, you know like he's still has that affection or has that you know like same i guess you could say wanting to support yuki that that whole thing even though he's opposing her that's still unchanged and as he said it's still unchanged and and i think this is also the reason why ayano was so probably conflicted because you can see how ayano like respects you uh, uh, masachika but seeing how masachika you know like like he, he he probably she probably respects masachika and yuki in the same way and like when he she heard that masachika is not going to support yuki he probably she, she herself probably felt conflicted that's why she came and asked him about this whole situation and when he said like oh it's the same like i still like think she's like she's the most precious person her i guess you could say her confusion or her like thing that she felt it probably got resolved and she was like, okay, I'm, I'm content with this, you know, that kind of thing. Like, yeah. And it is, I like, I don't know if what's going to happen in the future, but for now, at least I'm 100% sure that what Ayano feels for Masachika is not really love or anything, as he says, as she says, it's like admiration, like crazy amount of admiration, that kind of thing. And it's probably the same for um, Yuki as well. Um, that is why she was conflicted when she heard that Masachika is going to oppose Yuki. Because two of the people who she probably respects, she was conflicted that both of them are like at odds at each other. And, you know, that's why she wanted to confirm it. And that's why she came here. Um, right. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to continue in the future as well. Because it might change. But for now, at least, I don't think Ayano feels anything for um, Masajika. Now that might transform into genuine feelings in the future. Who knows? But that's for the future, I guess. You know, nothing. Yeah, nothing now you can say about it. Um, okay, and that was that. Now next uh, scene, we get to see uh, Masajika and his friends talking about the the magazine. And uh, then there's like the models, like the, the they're like idols. I'm assuming, yeah. And uh, she, he's like, oh, who do you like? And he's like, I don't like, you know, like watch idols and stuff. And uh, then the, his friend's like, oh, just pick by like the looks. So he, he picked one of the girls and she, they're like, oh, like you pick someone who looks like Kujo Senpai. And obviously Kujo Senpai, that means Masha. They're talking about Masha. So anyways, they're having this whole conversation. And... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the conversation like you know like goes towards Masha and then Alia comes in and just like like you know stomps his leg <laughs> and she's like mm, what the hell is that in your hand you know like you pervert <laughs> and he goes and she goes and sits down okay so okay so wait a minute yeah so they talk about like like who you want to go out with stuff like that you know um and alia was listening to all of that obviously alia you know with her russian now and then she was saying stuff like oh why couldn't it be me or something like that she was saying <laughs> oh my god okay so then they talk about like you know he says like oh someone who is like a has like a cute smile and stuff like that and alia's like fuming she's like yeah like you know like i'm definitely not that person <laughs> and then he, his friends also kind of try to like talk about this whole situation and makes the situation even worse in the end masajika's like come on guys like you know like you like alia's getting mad like say something else and this his this his one friend he's like oh okay don't worry leave it to me and he gets up and he's like well what does it say wait a minute but hey, that stuff doesn't matter when we're talking about a girl as pretty as Alia. Now, obviously, this whole statement that he made can be taken in a very wrong way. Like, <laughs> and that's exactly how Alia took it. And Alia's like, yeah, so this is, this is what you guys think of me? You know, like, like that's all I'm good for? My preface? 
<laughs> is that all I'm about? <laughs> oh my god. That was a very bad way of following up, you know. But what can we expect? This is one of those characters who's that, you know. You know, like every anime has, like rom-com anime has that one friend who always is just overblown about everything. Like just, you know, like every rom-com has that friend. So this is like one of them, I'm assuming. <laughs> Okay, next scene, we get to see uh, the conversation between Yuki and uh, uh, Ayano. So, they have that conversation and uh, he also... Oh, Masachika also said that if the grandfather has something to say to me, tell it to me directly. That's, uh, that was also something that they had with the conversation. Which is true, I 100% agree with it. And, you know, like, Ayano tells that to Yuki and Yuki's like, damn, so he's, he's going all out this time. Oh my god, and this part, she... <laughs> He says, oh, like, you know, my brother is amazing, isn't he? And I was like, yeah, he is. His fantastic aggressiveness and shock was through my womb. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sometimes the subtitles kind of mess up. I can guarantee you this. That's exactly what she says. In Japanese as well, as far as I could understand. That is exactly what she says. <laughs> There's no mistake in subtitling here. <laughs> that is exactly what he sa she said. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. And and then he she Yuki's like you're not really in love with him or anything? And she's like, no, don't worry about that. Like, that is correct. I idolize him as I do so. As I do you. There you go. But there are no romantic feelings. There. Like I said, you know, that's the whole situation. You know, it's just it's just like a like a stand standing for their idol, their favorite idol, that kind of thing. I would never have the gall to seek to be his girlfriend. Again, I don't know if this is going to continue in the future. Who knows, maybe she'll genuinely, like, you know, like, like him in the future. But that's for the future, I guess, because, you know, we'll see. At least for now, I don't think she's lying. She's just... <laughs> you can say you sound like a, like a masochist, like... Obviously, here, the, the subtitles were a bit weird, and she, like, I can understand, like, obviously, sub, and, you know, like, that whole thing. But, I don't know, I feel like the subtitles could have been a little bit different here, but, you know, whatever. And she's like, wait, what do you call, mean by, like, sub, or masochist? She's like, a super maid serving under a boss. And she's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll try my best to be that. <laughs> And she's like, damn, that's, that's such a statement. Okay, and then the whole thing where she says, like, you know, I confirmed with him, you are still the most important person to him in the world. And she goes, <laughs> opens the window, and she's like, damn, I almost, I almost blurted out my admiration. My dearest brother surely knows how to tug at my heartstrings. You can see how her way of speaking completely changes here. If she starts talking the way she does with Masachika. Anyways, and this is where she's like, okay, so he directly, he's like, okay, we're going to do this. So we're actually going to be having a battle, you know, against each other. That is interesting. The same big brother who I was never able to beat at anything. Um, and she's like, this is going to be interesting. Here they also talk about the whole, how the students look at Alia and Yuki. You know, like, according to Ayano, Yuki is obviously Yuki. Everyone knows that she, or thinks that she's going to become the president because she's that talented, she's that good. But then everyone is talking about Alia and in a way as if like, oh, she's that one transfer student who's just doing some things. It's like, it's just a silly thing that she's doing. You know, ah, she's probably going to get defeated in one or two rounds. You know, that's just a silly thing. That kind of thing. It's, that's the whole like thing going on. People think that, oh, it's just something that she's trying. And she'll never be able to do it. That is how people have no faith in Alia. Which, obviously, fair enough. Because nobody really knows. Haven't really seen Alia in action. And Alia herself is definitely in need of more, I guess you could say, leadership qualities. And a lot of other stuff she needs. The only thing she has currently is her never-bending will to fight and stay. You know, that is the thing. Like, her never giving up that attitude. That is the only thing that she has with her. Currently, other than that, Masajika himself said that she needs to improve in a lot of other things. And uh, yeah, and, and also, like I said, like, that's why obviously every student is like, oh, she's just, you know, 
whatever. Yuki is definitely going to become the president because Yuki has already proven himself, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and here it's pretty much confirmed. Like he, she says, like, you know, like Yuki, is, uh, Ali, Mashatika is the, the greatest prodigy that Sue family has ever produced. And like I said, he, she was talking in a weird way here. And I was like, okay. And then she's like, um, I don't know, what, was I, like, was my whole conversation, did it seem like a last boss, you know, did it seem like that? So, and then I was like, oh my god, she was deliberately doing that. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's, it's difficult to understand when, <laughs> like, you've seen this show, like, you know, kind of make these jokes and these, like, you know, like, um, character tropes and everything kind of highlight them, you know. And since animes do this so many times, this whole, like, ever-exaggerated way of talking and everything, you know, it's kind of difficult to understand whether this showing is genuinely doing it or it's just something that Yuki is doing just for like 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 giggles and you know like like laugh like just yeah just because of that just to make fun of the whole thing or like a joke about it. So so that was what she was doing. Like she was just yeah she was like oh did I sound like that one of those villains? <laughs> right. Okay. And this is another thing. I've seen like you know, a lot of people be like, what the hell is wrong with this girl? Like, you know, she like, she talks weird, acts weird, she has that whole ciscon type of like thing, you know. Oh, sorry, not broke on life, not ciscon, sorry. Broke on life of thing, that, that whole thing. And then I've seen a lot of people. I feel like people, it's probably a bit difficult for people to understand or unless I until they properly watch this so. But this whole thing that Yuki does is something that she mimics. She mimics from anime and manga. Basically, I guess you could say in a chuny type of way she does this you know where she's like mimicking what characters do in anime and manga so this whole like you know like this obviously she definitely loves his her brother that is not wrong but the over exaggerated way that he she does everything like this that's just a joke for like you know her joking around about anime and manga how they do it and how she's trying she's doing it like that as well you know again like i said she's basically a chunibyo that is basically what it is you know and that's what she does like most of the time she em like mimics all of these things which obviously it makes sense because as we've seen like her situation she's very she was very lonely and you know like i'm guessing probably anime and manga these type of things were probably something that you know like supported her throughout her like tough days that's why she's so much into it and she's just you know like like becomes this whole chuny person completely like goes crazy and overboard so yeah so that's why it ha like you know this is the situation okay anyways next we get to see um them playing cards in the student council room where alia apparently is very easy to read obviously she's literally showing everything on her face Yuki is obviously has a poker face, you know, and not only a poker face, she can, she's very much, she can very much trick other people into thinking a particular way. So that's why Alia is losing. And I love how they're playing using chocolates because obviously they cannot use money here. That'll be proper gambling. <laughs> so they're using chocolates here, which is nice. Oh boy. <clears throat> okay, here the conversation like kind of changes from Alia to Masha. So they talk about how Masha has like a very special type of energy. She's kind of ditzy, but at the same time, you know, like she, she sometimes she shows some weird type of like, you know, like, yeah, like they, they were kind of conflicted about Masha's, situ Masha's situation. What type of person she is. Is she really ditzy or something? But, you know, um, yeah. And uh, okay, then the conversation changes to Ayano, where Ayano talks about how she was taught by her grandfathers to become like a ninja because you know as someone who serves someone you need to make sure that you don't stand out more than your master so that's why she has mastered this art of being completely like a shadow you know like in everyone's background <laughs> that's why she can she's so fast and she's so nimble and they show us a training montage of her you know training to be like this <laughs> Right. Anyways, and this is where she kind of me almost messes up and calls Masachika as Masachika-sama. You know, but then she, like, like, 
covers it up and then yeah masajika calls her and talks to her and you can see the like you know the idolization of him in her eyes she's very much you know respectful and very much idolizes him and it's pretty obvious looking at her nightly idolization her eyes are filled with love and respect <laughs> yeah okay oh yeah they also reveal how his her parents are just office workers it's not like a like a job or something like you know like a familial job it's just something that his grand her grandfather parents used to do her grandfather used to do and now she's doing it because she she likes that you know that's why she she trained with her grandfather you know to be a perfect attendant okay right after that the conversation again switches to alia where masachika is like oh like you know looks like alia is having fun and everyone's like wait alia is having fun she doesn't look like how she's having fun she's struggling <laughs> and she's like, he's like no no you, like, you can you can kind of understand it and masha is also like oh you can understand that can you not you know and and he's like yeah i can so then masha goes tries to go and buy more buy a refill of the drink and uh, you know you uh, masajika also ends up accompanying her this is the part i feel like a lot of people will probably like miss this part or at least this is how i see what this whole scene was um everyone tells her like different items you can say oh cafe ale another person's like oh this another person's oh this that it's not the same thing there was a, there were at least 5 to 6 people here and every single person said a different thing now you see this scene and not only that even sarashina she was also like oh cola no ginger ale so you know it's difficult to keep track of everything so everyone said their piece and then they were going to go out yeah masachika is like okay so with your cider ginger ale lemon tea brown cafe au lait Oshiruko and water. Gotcha. Leaves. This scene, obviously, like, like in these type of situation, usually, the person who is told all of these orders, they're probably, they usually, they're like, okay, like, can you please repeat it? There's so many things I cannot remember it properly. Can you please repeat it once more? And then they repeat it. And I'm pretty sure everyone was expecting that. Even the Stone Council President Sasha, they were also expecting. him uh, like uh, masachika to ask like oh can you please repeat it there were so many of them i couldn't keep track of it you know so that's what they were expecting he completely says all of that with no like mistake that's why they were so surprised it was like what the hell like how and that shows why she's a prodigy even alia was like what the hell like I'm assuming her him being a prodigy is probably something to do with, I don't know, maybe obviously like intelligent and all that stuff is definitely there. But I think she he also has like some kind of a photographic memory or something like that. Maybe something like that, or she he can remember stuff so quickly. Like he 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 repeated everything without any mistakes at that point. Anyways, after that, you know, Masha and Masajika have a conversation. Masha says like, okay, you know, like you're supporting my sister. I like it. You know, and this is where Masachika is like, "Oh, you're deliberately hiding a responsible side from Alia," and this is where she's like, "You know, like I really love my sister, and uh, sibling are a difficult like type of a relationship. You know, you're so close to each other that it always gets difficult for you know people not to compare you, and when people compare you, that is obviously." not good for both of the like because you know people always people say like oh your sister she's this so i'm sure you'll be able to do it or oh your your brother you know he can do this so i have good like you know like obviously they're not trying to insult you or anything but the comparison in itself is sometimes very very uh, i guess you could say difficult and it puts a crazy pressure on you trying to where you try to outperform your sibling and uh, it makes your relationship with a sibling bitter as well 
she knows that and she deliberately decided to play the part of a ditzy person in front of everyone else so that the whole that whole thing never comes up where nobody compares them and even if they compare them it's where they compare her to alia not the other way around because she doesn't want to bitter the relationship where alia herself usually struggles with a lot of other things she tries her best and on top of that if some people compares her to her sister her sister that'll be even worse you know so to avoid that you know she she acts like this and she she kind of hides her responsible side and just acts like this ditzy little sister uh ditzy big sister in front of everyone else so that nobody compares them yeah which is very nice obviously and that is also the reason why she's also hiding her like relationship with Masachi Kaisa when they were kids and she's not revealing it because she doesn't want to stand in the in her way <clears throat> and this is where while having this conversation this is when Masachi Kaisa also thinks of her his situation with Yuki and you know I can understand I only get away with not feeling inferior to Yuki because she has no qualms in showing her love and admiration for her so okay this part is kind of interesting because he, she says like I feel I get only get away with not feeling inferior to Yuki so he also feels inferior to Yuki as well which I guess makes sense because you know obviously Yuki has a few things which Masajika probably doesn't have for example I'm assuming her charisma her the way she talks to people like how she's very like she has like the leadership quality which Masajika doesn't doesn't have I, I doubt he has that he you know he probably admires that in Yuki you know something like that even though he's a prodigy and Yuki him herself looks at Masajika as someone really amazing he from his side feels inferior in this sense I'm assuming and obviously like I said and the guilt is also a big part you know her his guilt for no, leaving her alone. And this is where he's like, oh wait, is, is Yuki actually like playing up her otaku persona just because of that? And then he's like, nah, she's a full-blown otaku, never mind. <laughs> yeah, and this is where Masajika talks about how his situation is different. I just play the slacker so that I can take it easy and not have people depending on it. And Masha realizes that he is sad and kind of pets him in the head. <laughs> head pat. <laughs> He's like, what the hell? <laughs> He's like, I, I don't get it. Why is it so easy for her to break through my shell? Yeah. Well, obviously, we all know why. Later on, um, after that scene, Taniyama has a conversation with Alia and this is where the whole situation starts. But Taniyama's like, it's a pretty classes move, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Stealing away um, Yuki's partner? Are you trying to do it to spite her? And okay, yeah, so like I said, this whole conversation, it goes in a weird way. I was confused at first because at first it seemed like she's like, oh, why are you doing this? You know, why did you take Masajika away from Yuki? And then she, when Yuki, Masajika comes in and talks about the situation and says, it is my decision. She's like, oh, so it's you. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush you. And then she also says the same thing for Alia when Alia's like, I'm the president, so talk to me. And she's like, okay, so I'll crush you too. So that is how it goes. So I was kind of confused. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, at first it seems like she's angry at the fact that Masajika is with her. But then she's like turning against Masajika, like I didn't understand. But I think like I said, as far as I could understand by the end of it, she idolizes Yuki, I think. And that is why seeing Alia take away her, her partner, he, she probably didn't like it. And she told Alia about it. And when she realized that it's not Alia, but Masajika who decided to go along with her, her anger turns to Masajika because she thinks Masajika is not worthy enough to be standing beside Yuki or when he stood beside Yuki she, he wasn't worthy enough and uh, that's why she gets m m pissed off over here and she's like okay I'm going to show you and like I, I, I like we all know Masika hides his like you know like his 
his, I guess you could say his capabilities. So she has no idea about that, but she thinks, she just thinks that he's a slacker. And a slacker like him, she's very mad at the fact that she took the vice president, he took the vice president position where there's a lot of other people who's more, like, who's more worthy of it. And, uh, you know, so she thinks that, oh, like, he's not good enough for Yuki, but she's mad at the fact that he was the vice president or something like that. It's like a complicated, I guess you could say, feeling. It's kind of like that. Yeah, anyways, so they have this whole full blown, like, you know, like conversation, like, you know, this whole clash. And in the end, she's like, okay, so they're both of you, like, you know, I challenge you to a student congress. I think that's what she says. And I'm going to defeat both of you immediately and show you, you know, yeah. So that's where it ended. So quite a few things happened today, you know. So yeah, the video got too long today. Um, and uh, that's where it ended. So next episode, we'll see what happens with the whole student con congress, I think. And yeah, that was it. That was my reaction to today's episode, episode number seven. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below. Anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. That is it, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Roshi Dere. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.